Hey guys, it's Bub here. A few months ago, I did a video on installing Windows 8.1 to RAM. Yes, actually installing an operating system to physical RAM. Some people may have never even heard of this or never even knew it was an option. How could you install something to RAM? Well, this thing called RAM disks exist. And what a RAM disk is, is it basically allows you to use your RAM as storage. Obviously, it's not recommended for entire operating systems. For temporary storage that you can access quickly, that's what RAM disk is. If you don't know, RAM has incredibly high read and write speeds because it has to have files ready at all times that a system can go in and grab. However, the downside to using a RAM disk is when you restart your computer, RAM gets cleared, therefore your RAM disk and any files contained on it are gone. However, for the time being, it has incredibly high read and write speeds, which makes it perfect for a very, very, very lightweight operating system. So in this video, we're gonna be installing Tiny10 on RAM disk. Now I've done videos on both of these things before. I've done Windows 8.1 on RAM disk and a video on Tiny10. So definitely make sure to go check those out before you watch this video. However, the software we're gonna be using to create the RAM disk is called IM disk. In my last RAM disk video, I used Primer RAM disk. However, you have to pay for that after 30 days. And I feel like it's more complex than IM disk. IM disk also allows you to mount an image file and do a ton more things than just create a RAM disk. However, for this video, we're gonna be using the RAM disk function. Now, since Tiny10 is only a 900 megabyte file, 936, we don't need a huge RAM disk to actually install it on. So we're just gonna be creating a 20 gigabyte RAM disk since my system does have 32 gigabytes of RAM. A drive letter can simply be R, that's fine with me, and NTFS. We don't need a temp folder because we'll be using this for VMware. Our drive label can simply be Tiny10VM because that's what we'll be using it for. And other than that, everything is all good. So as we click OK, just go ahead and watch it. It spikes all the way up to whatever is going to be used. So here are our properties for our brand new RAM disk. And there we go. We are now running 27.4 gigabytes of RAM. Now, of course, you can use this for traditional files, you can go ahead and copy over. And the only thing really limiting this here is the speed of my SSD, but we can just see how quickly all of my videos for 2021 copied over to this. Um, it is truly a very, 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 very snappy and fast storage device. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, when you restart your computer, the RAM disk gets cleared, which is why we don't use RAM to store files on a day-to-day -day basis. How are we gonna install Tiny10 through a VM? Well, it's actually really simple. We're gonna go through and create a standard installation of Win Tiny 10 except at our location, we're going to go through this PC and go straight to our Tiny 10 VM. We are going to use the Tiny 10 VM RAM disk as our virtual machine. So we're just gonna change the name to Tiny 10 and that's all we have to do. And now obviously this is going to act as a super, super, super fast storage device. And just watching the install times, I mean, copying files there, it's already done, um, to eight. I mean, just watching this, it's going from an SSD to a RAM disk. So it's being limited by the SSD a little bit, but it is rapidly installing less than a minute Windows install. Now, once we click restart, this is going to actually run the VM that is stored on the RAM disk, not running from an ISO, not running from a DVD, simply running straight from the RAM disk. We should be brought into the out-of-box experience very soon after it sets up things, but yeah. And my reason for wanting to do this is because Tiny10 is already a very small, efficient, and quick operating system because it has so much of the unnecessary Windows 10 things taken out of it. So I wanted to see how fast we could actually get this to run. Now, of course, we are on an i7-10700K with this RAM disk, so this should be probably one of the fastest operating systems anyone has ever seen even virtualized. Now, after we go through the out-of-box experience, if you're ever installing Tiny10, I learned from my last video that this black screen doesn't mean your system is frozen. This black screen simply means that right now it's extracting all the files because it's only a 931 megabyte ISO compared to your traditional, I think, 4.7 gigabyte ISO. Right now is where it's extracting and really setting everything up. This is in place of that hello, fading, we're getting things ready for you screen. And here we are. We are inside of Tiny10. Now things may seem a little bit laggy right now, but that's because we don't actually have VMware tools installed right now. I am going to have to install those so we can get acceleration enabled. 
But just if you've never seen Tiny10 before, just take a look at how minimal of an install it is. I mean, it is really a minimal, minimal installation. Nothing is really installed. There's not even a web browser pre-installed. All right, so this is our first restart after actually installing VMware Tools, just seeing how quick it is. I mean, I think this should be one of the fastest boot ups I have ever seen. Or maybe I'm wrong. My main computer booted up faster than this. I have no clue why this is being this slow. But there we go. That wasn't too slow. That wasn't as fast as I had hoped, but it was still better. Now that we have acceleration enabled, we can just really see how quick things are. Um, let's just open, there's not really any intense things here. Let's open computer management. Okay, that's not as good as I had hoped. Let's open, I don't know, PowerShell. That opened instantly. Um, it is a really fast, really, really fast um, device. So, because there is no web browser, I am going to have to get the disk information from my main computer. All right, so I know that these tests aren't done, but I'm just gonna call it here because these are not the results I was expecting. The RAM disk should be way, way, way faster than my main SSD. However, I'm not sure why it's not. My main SSD is actually better in read speeds than, the, than this. I have no clue why it's being this way. I have no clue why. Uh, now my writes on the RAM disk are better than the reads, but on my last RAM disk video, I mean, it was way faster. I have no clue why it's doing this. I mean, just to show, yes, all of the Tiny10 VM things are here in the RAM disk. So I have no clue why this is being this way, but the operating system itself is significantly more fast and responsive. Um, it's, I guess it's not all about benchmarks. It's more about how the actual OS works and it is very responsive. Everything loads quick fast and it's still pretty cool so the general consensus of a ram disk is it's for temporary storage it's not for operating systems it's not for anything they're only really meant to be used in an instance where you need fast temporary storage because like i said when you restart it it all goes away so thank you for watching this video um, if you liked it, make sure to subscribe because I do all kinds of different technology experiments. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.